Open our Bibles to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. That's next to the last book in the whole Bible, just before the book of Revelation, the little uh, only chapter book of Jude. Look with me, if you will, there this morning. And I want you to listen carefully. It's a different service this morning. It's the last Sunday of the year. And this is no doubt probably the smallest Sunday morning crowd we've had this year, except when it snowed. Um, so many people gone, bus kids gone, um, families out sick, people slid and laid out. And uh, there's never as many people sick as they claim they are, because they'll, they'll be at work tomorrow. And... Uh, but anyway, being a small crowd here this morning, um, sometimes you think a message like this is not for us, but it is. I believe the Lord put it on my heart this morning. And I'm going to bring you a message, and it's not going to be long, so I need everybody to pay real close attention. Please, give me your attention just for a few minutes this morning. If you're saved and you know it, then I need you to pray during this message. If there's that much doubt in your mind that you're saved and going to heaven when you die, then you need to listen to every word I'm going to say. I'm going to draw you a comparison this morning from the Word of God. I prayed about this a lot yesterday and last night. And about 5 o'clock this morning, I was up praying that God would do something in somebody's heart today. So please listen. Jude and verse... Number two. Verse number 22. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Back in the, the beginning of verse 23, it said we're to save some people with fear... Pulling them out of the fire. And that's what I want. Morning, being pulled out of the fire. On January the 27th, 1903. Over a hundred years, or about a hundred years ago now, over a hundred years. A fire broke in London in an insane asylum. Back then, people who were had lost their mind mentally... Uh, they were called lunatics and they were put in insane asylum. They were not treated near as well as they are now. Things were not near as safe as they are now. And it wasn't easy for them to escape as it is now. This, this was in London, 1903, in January, cold weather. A fire broke out. There were 300 patients in that asylum, that hospital. Fifty of them were burned to death on that terrible, terrible day. And 250, the other 250, literally had to be pulled out of that fire. While the work of rescue was going on during that fire, the insane people behaved in such a way that reminds me of the way people behave today. Sinners, when their salvation is sought by us as Christians. Now, what I mean by that is, when I read this story, I found out that they acted just like people act today when we try to get them saved. What I'm going to say this morning is I'm going to have preach this whole message from the concept is that there is somewhere below a literal burning hell with real fire in it. And anybody who's not saved still goes to hell and burns when they die. They're burning right now. People are burning and screaming in hell fire right now while me and you are enjoying our lives. While we'll go out to lunch and, or maybe go home and fix something and eat and rest a little while, people are screaming in hell right now this morning. That's why if God never done nothing for us but save us, we've got something to shout about from now on for the rest of our life. There is a real hell. Now, this fire in this insane asylum was a picture 
of hell. These people trying to rescue these people out of there were a picture of soul winners, bus workers, churches, Sunday school teachers, preachers, evangelists, pastors, and missionaries. I want to say, first of all this morning, that some of those people laughed at the mention of fire. They laughed at it. They were not in their right mind. They were out there, and somebody come in and said, hey, the building's on fire. And some of them laughed. They thought it was funny. They thought it was a big joke. They were not in their right mind. Nobody in their right mind laughs at the mention of fire in the building. If you know the building's on fire, down just a little higher, Brother Mike. If you know the building's on fire, there's nothing funny about it. If a man laughs at the building being on fire, he's either drunk or he's crazy. Now, did you know the Bible said the prodigal son, when he was down there in the hog pen, and, and when he lost everything he had, and he spent all of his money, and he wound up on, on Skid Row there, you know what the Bible said about him? The Bible said he came to himself. That means he was not in his right mind while he was living it up. And I want to say this morning, any time anybody is living it up in sin, y'all are quiet now, Anytime anybody is living it up in sin, they are not in their right mind. They're not in their right mind. Anybody is out of their mind to go out here. What if I appear this morning and this, this platform was only about that thick and underneath me were snakes and crocodiles and all kinds of venom and poison. And I was just up here dancing around and saying, Hey, I want to have... You'd say, That man's crazy. He's lost his mind. That's the same way people are this morning. Everybody who was out partying last night is not in their right mind. They're just not thinking. They don't realize. They laugh at the mention of fire. They joke about it. I'm going to tell you this morning, anybody who jokes and laughs when you mention hellfire is not in their right mind. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's one thing in the world that ain't funny, it's hellfire. If there's anything that's not a joke, it's hell. If there's anything that's not funny at all, it is hell. Hell is real. Hell is hot. God ain't never put an air condition down there. God ain't never turned the temperature down one degree. It's just as hot as it was the day He set it on fire. And it's not a joke. It's not funny. There is still a hell. And we've got to realize this morning that anybody that laughs about going to hell is not in the right mind. They laughed about it. They thought it was a joke. I mean, they, they said there ain't no such thing as hell. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you this morning, if there's no hell, if there's no hell, then every one of us are just wasting our time here this morning. If there is no hell, let's bring all of our missionaries back home and quit sending money over there. I, I wouldn't give money out of my pocket to support missionaries if all they're going to do is go over there and help people learn how to grow corn. Or grow. Let's bring all the missionaries home if there's no hell. If there's no hell, let's park them buses and sell them to the first person that comes along. Amen. If there's no hell, let's stop trying to come up here and pray or fast or doing anything. But brother, if there is a hell, then keep the missionaries going at all costs. If there is a hell, put gas in them buses. If it takes a life, I'm not. If there is a hell, let's knock on doors. Let's pray. Let's fast. If there is a hell, it makes all the difference if there's a hell. Listen, if there's not a hell, then there's no use in us going day and night. There's no use in me traveling, preaching revival. There's no reason for them to be back here in that junior church trying to teach those kids that there's a God. But if there is a hell, that's worth everything we can ever do or give or say or be to reach one person and keep them out of there. Amen? You believe there's a hell? But he laughed at it. Did you know hell on TV is a joke? Did you know rock singers make hell a joke? The rock group ACDC sings, Hell ain't a bad place to be. You know why them fools sing that? Because the devil inspires them. They ain't never hell. They don't know. When they get to hell, they won't say that. When they say highway to hell, or hell, we're going we're gonna to drive like hell because we're all going to get there and we're all going to party. I'm telling you what tonight, uh, this morning, friends, ladies and gentlemen, you hear me? There is a hell and some people laughed about it. They laugh about going to hell on TV. They make it as a joke. 
All the movie stars talking about hell this and hell that. You know why their problem? You know what the problem is? They're out of their right mind. They laughed at the mention of fire. But let me say this this morning. Some would not leave their bed at night and go out. The people went down to there. 300 patients in that insane asylum. The workers went down through there. Let's go! Let's go! Knocking on every door. Knocking on every door. Let's go! You got to get out! You got out! You got to get out! You know what some of those people did? They smelled the smoke. They knew the fire was coming down the hall and covered up their head and laid in their bed. They were afraid to leave the comfort of their bed. That bed was the only place of security that they knew. That bed... They thought would protect. They thought, I'm scared to get up and leave my bed. I'm scared to get up and walk out that door. And so I've talked to many, many, many people like that who are afraid to leave their present enjoyment even to save their soul from hell. Uh, uh, here's a man, here's a man laying in the bed and fire's coming down the hall going to burn him up. You'd say he's crazy, wouldn't you? You'd say he's crazy. But he said, I don't want to leave my comfort. I don't want to leave it. It's just like some of you who say, I would get saved, but I don't want to leave my liquor bottle. Or I don't want to leave my marijuana joint. Or I don't want to leave that girlfriend. Or that girlfriend. You're crazy, friend. You're crazy. You say, well, that person's crazy laying in the head because it's going to burn them up and get them anyway. If they're going to have to give it up anyway... So why not run out the door and save your life? I'm saying to you this morning, you're going to have to quit your sin in any way. You're going to have to get up your liquor bill anyway. You're going to have to give up your dope anyway. Why not just come to God and give it up and get yourself saved? You know why? You're not thinking. You're not thinking. So you kids here this morning say, well, I'm not saved. I don't care what he said. I'm having too much fun. You have to be fun anyway. One of them old country singers one time, he said, Well, I don't want to go to heaven because there ain't no whiskey in heaven. Uh, who wants to go? I thought, you you retard? There ain't none in hell neither. Amen. Now listen, man, you ain't going to get drunk in hell. You ain't going to get drunk in heaven. You're going to have to quit it anyway real soon. Why not quit it now and come to Jesus and get saved? You say, well, I'm shacking up with sinning and I don't want to quit. Well, you might not want to quit, but you're going to anyway. God's going to make you quit anyway. You might as well quit now. Why, it'll do you some good. Some were afraid to leave their bed at night. Their madness is self-evident by the choices they made. They said, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. The fire down the hall, leave me alone. You're going to get burned up. Just quit telling me that. You're judging. Get out of my face. You don't love me. I'm telling you, man, the building's on fire. Get up and run. I don't want to hear it. I'm covering up my head. I'm all right like I am. Don't that remind you of the people are today? People say, leave me alone, preacher. I don't want to hear it. I ain't going down there at that church and letting that preacher preach on hell. I'm not going... And by the way, do you folks realize how uncommon it is to go to a church anymore and hear a preacher get up and preach like I'm preaching to you this morning? It just don't happen no more. But I'm telling you this morning, God Almighty has never took hell out of this book. He's never changed His mind. He said anybody that's not saved is going to go there and you're going to burn like a piece of bacon in a pan if you don't get saved. You hear me? You'll burn, you'll burn, you'll burn and you'll beg God to get out. But you'll never get out. You say, Lord, have mercy. If I, if I know a church where if the preacher preached like that, they'd fire it. If he don't preach like that, they ought to fire it. Amen. If there ain't no hell, then he ought, he's taking money under false pretenses. And if there are one, he's a coward if he don't preach it. And he ought to get up and tell uh, people, there's a hell! There's a hell! There's a literal burning, blistering hell. And if you don't get saved, you're going to go there. You hear me? You say, well, I, it just bothers me when people... You're just like them people in the crazy house. You're just not thinking. You're just not using your brain. They're ju just not using your brain. They would not leave their bed and go out at night. Number three, I want to say this. Some of them thought the rescuers had made up the fire. Some of them thought the rescuers had made up the fire. They accused the rescuers of trying to burn them and disturbing their peace. Don't that sound like people today? They only, they only proved that they were beside themselves. They you know what they did? They're going to understand. Why did you set our building on fire? You're trying to hurt us. You're trying. Them people was there trying to rescue them. They was there trying to get them out of that fire. And they cursed them. 
and said, get away from me. Can you imagine a man laying in here in the bed? And here's a man come beating on the door, saying, we've got to get you out of here. We've got to get you out of here. And they said, leave me alone. There ain't no fire. You shut the building on fire. I hate you. And he's just trying to help them. It is a proof of insanity that people fight against people trying to rescue them. Listen, I said it's a proof of insanity that people fight against somebody trying to help them. And yet you got husbands all over this country who cuss their wife trying to get them to church and get them saved. Amen? You got wives all over this country who cuss their kids for trying to get them to come to church. We got bus kids who say, Mama, why don't you come? Shut up. I don't want to hear it. Them people down there at the church, they just preach. You know, there are people who think preachers made up the doctrine of hell just to scare people and just to torment them so they can keep people, uh, you know, keep them, keep over them and, and keep them in church and stuff like that. I'm going to tell you something this morning. I don't enjoy preaching sermons like this. I'm not glad there's a hell. I wish there wasn't a hell. But if I'm true to my calling, and I'm true to God that saved me and called me, I've got to tell you there's a blistering fire and you'll go there. If you're not saved, I would be a hireling. I would be a fake. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't tell you there's a hell. They thought the rescuers made up the fire. The rescuers didn't make up the fire. I didn't make up hell. I didn't. You say, well, why them preachers always hell, fire, and damnation? I'll tell you why. Because there is hell, fire, and there is damnation. If you're not saved here this morning, you're not in your right mind. Your kids, listen to me. If you're not saved and you don't know you're saved, you adults, listen to me. If you're not saved, you don't know you're saved, you are not in your right mind. I would not walk that door if I had that much doubt where I was going when I die. If, if listen, you could be killed in a car wreck, that bus could wreck and kill you on the way home. You don't know how much longer you've got. It's a crazy thing to walk out of the house of God knowing you're saved. They thought the rescuers made up the fire. They said, you people just made this thing up. You just made it up. You say, Lord in mercy, you're scaring me to death, preacher. You ought to be scared. If you're not scared, you're not in your right mind. You're insane. Amen. My mom here this morning sitting back there and she taught me when I was little there's a heaven there's a hell. And I believed it and I still believe it. When you know she sang that song, her and my aunt, Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. And the words of that song rang in my ear and all through high school. And when I was lost in sin, I never, I always thought, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. And I remember thinking, when you go to hell, maybe you'll just burn up. Maybe you'll just burn for five minutes. Maybe if you sin 15 years, you'll burn 15 years. Sin 20 years, you'll burn 20 years. Or maybe you'll burn according to how bad your sins was. But I knew them old preachers would get up and they'd point their finger and say the smoke of their torment ascends up forever. And they have no rest, day nor night, forever and ever. I'm not talking about something that lasts 10 or 15 minutes, or 10 or 15 years, or 10 or 15 million. The Bible said the smoke of your torment. You hear me tonight? today. Are you listening to me? Listen, that's why we ought to run them buses, folks. That's why we ought to knock on them. Somebody's going to burn. It's more important than mine and your personal comfort. It's more important than mine and your personal needs or our personal wants. They're going to burn if they're not saved. You're not in your right mind. I'm going to say this, number four. Some were found hiding under the bed from that fire. Some of those insane people, they felt the heat. They smelled the smoke. And when it started burning in their room, they climbed up under their beds thinking that bed would protect them from a fire that's going to burn the whole building down. We're talking January 27, 1903 in London in an insane asylum. 300 of them were in there. They thought the bed will save me. The bed will save me. They didn't know no better. Fifty of them burned to death. And 250 got pulled out. You know what I'm trying to do this morning? If I could, I'd reach and grab you by the shoulder. And I'd pull you. And I'd say, why don't you come get saved? If I could make that step for you, if I could make it any easier, if I could help you, if I could make a move for you, I'd do it for you this morning. You know, there's a holy hush settled over this crowd here already just since I started preaching. God's in this place today. 
God wants to save somebody from hell this morning. Maybe one of you young people. Maybe one of you teens. Maybe you're a church member. You know what they done? Crawled under that bed. Thought that bed would protect them from that fire. How sad. How sad and pitiful that really is. You know what that is? That's a picture of people who think maybe, maybe, maybe their church membership, maybe their baptism is enough. Maybe their good works. You'd be surprised that the people would say, are you going to heaven when you die? Well, I do the best I can. Well, I pay my bills. You're just like that person hiding under the bed thinking it's going to protect them from the fire. It ain't going to protect you. That ain't enough. That ain't enough. You're just like a person hiding under the bed is a person saying, well, I've been baptized. Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough. You're like a person that said, I belong to the church. Isn't that enough? No, it's not enough. You must be born again. There must come that time in your life when you repent and take Jesus Christ as your Savior. There must be that time in your life when God moves into your heart and changes you and puts your name in the book of life. Something's got to happen inside. Y'all listening to me, teenagers? If something's got to happen on the inside. Hiding under the bed wasn't going to save them. Number five. I'm going to say this and I'm hurrying. Many of them fought against the rescues. Literally fought against the rescuers, biting them and tearing their hair out. Biting them. Come on, sir. We've got to get you out of here. No! Leave me alone! Ah, but you know what? Anybody, anybody who's trying to save you out of a burning building and you bite them and kick them and push them away, that means you're not in your right mind. You are out of your mind, buddy. You're crazy. You're crazy. That tells me we are dealing with a generation of crazy people. They'll cuss you. They'll bite you. They'll throw beer cans at you. They'll threaten you. They'll say, you better never step foot. I've had them tell me, you better never step, that preacher better never come back over here. We had them, somebody said not long ago, anybody from that church come to this house, we're going to cuss them out. What's wrong with them? They're out of their mind. Insane. Crazy. We're trying to rescue them. Trying to pull them out of the fire. And they're fighting against them that would save them out of the fire. They thought the rescuers had made it up. They only proved they were beside themselves. They were fighting against those seeking their salvation. Many husbands fight against their wives with all their might. And the wife wants them saved. She sees and knows their condition. You've heard me give the illustration before. About these two months is sitting in a bar one, one night. One of them said something about a Christian. Y'all help me now. These kids still and quiet. Everybody. The mama, the, the, the mama was at home. Two drunks sitting in a bar. One of them said, well, my wife's a Christian. He said, she is not, so they ain't no Christians. He said, I guarantee you my wife's one. He said, there ain't no such thing. They're all a bunch of hypocrites. He said, I'll tell you what I can do. He said, right now, I can go over at the house. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I can I beat the door open. And I can tell her to get out of bed and fix me some breakfast and she'll get up and do it. He said, she won't do it. He said, you sorry old drunk. Ain't no woman going to do that for you. He said, all right. I'll bet you. And they made a bet and they went over to the house. Two o'clock in the morning, he slams the, the door open, comes in us and says, woman, get up and fix me something to eat. He said, that woman got up, went in there, turned the stove on, put out some eggs, started in that other drunk's mouth, got about that big. He said, I can't believe that. He said, Woman, are you crazy? Sorry, good for nothing husband like you've got. Why are you so good to him? And she turned around with a tear in her eye and said, Because she said, I'm saved. She said, My I'm going to heaven when I die. And said, He's not saved. He's not a Christian. He's never going to make it. He's going to burn in hell forever. And she said, I made up my mind that I was just going to make his life as comfortable as I could while he's still here. She's trying her best to pull that man out of that fire so he wouldn't burn in hell. He's such a fool that he'd fight against her. Anybody who fights against the person trying to get them saved is out of their mind. You're crazy. You're crazy. You think, man, I'm cool, man. Don't bother me with all that religion. You're showing how stupid you are. There's a fire out here and there's somebody trying to rescue you. For heaven's sake, cooperate with them. Let them let them tell, you, tell you the truth. Come to God. Repent today. Get on this altar and get saved before you leave here this morning. Get in your right mind. You listening? They were biting them. Tearing their hair out. 
I've had a knife pulled on me. I've had a gun pulled on me. One man was preaching at the trade lot in Marion Mountain. He pulled out a knife that long. And I got down from preaching. He said, he held up like that and said, you better be glad you quit when you did. And I was shaking everybody's hand. And some of my friends gathered around me in case he started something. And I, and I thought, you know what's wrong with that man? He's crazy. He's crazy. He's crazy. Can you imagine if I was going this way and I was going to fall in a fire and burn and burn and burn and burn and you was trying to help me? Am I going to pull an eye on you? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. See? Crazy. Crazy. When they leave you a track, they're trying to pull you out of the fire. When they invite you to Sunday school, we're trying to pull you out of the fire. When we have big days and do something for God, we're trying to pull you out of the fire. When they run that bus by your house, we're trying to pull you out of the fire. For heaven's sake, let them help you. Let them rescue you. Come to God. Come and die on the cross. He did it to rescue you. Everywhere I go, I say it went for the ball. Yesterday, he took some stuff back to trade it after Christmas. And I was down there and saw a bunch of people we know and, and uh, stuff. And I noticed there's young people and hips and stuff walking around all over the place, dressed real wicked, and big crosses around their neck like that. That cross is the only hope they'll have for staying out of hell. And they make it like it's some kind of joke, like, in your face, God, we don't care what you think. You know what's wrong with them? They're stupid. I'm talking about people like Madonna and all the rappers that wear a cross around. They're stupid. They're just ignorant. They have no idea that that cross represents they're taken out of hellfire. And they're just trying to be cool. They're ignorant. Ignorant. God help. The last thing I'll say this morning is some of them were heard screaming and beating at the door when it was too late. The rescuers got all they could get. They pulled 200 and something out of the fire in that insane. They pulled them and dragged them. And some of them, when the fire started touching their legs, began to run and scream and beat on the door and say, Help! Ah! Ah! Like that. You see, it's too late. The rescuers had done all that they could do. Like in the days of Noah. They, they, they had, the flood came and they were beating on the doors of that ark no doubt no doubt begging Noah please let us in please let us in you know that that nightclub fire they had up in Rhode Island or where that was back several months ago do you know them people were in there that night 300 of them same amount I'm talking about here this morning all of them out of their mind they was in there holding beer bottles up yeah we're going to party and that band got up and started playing you remember it was on the news for two or three weeks and all of a sudden they had these sparklers come up like right here and that thing went whoosh, and got in the insulation of that building and fire started coming out like that and you know what a lot of them people thought they thought it's part of the show no big deal it's all an act. It's a big deal. And suddenly the roof got engulfed in flames and fire started dropping on them and they started pushing and screaming like a bunch of crazy people. All they thought about was, where's that door? Where's that door? Where's that door? There were people there with other people's wives. There were people there that were drunk. There were people there that were supposed to be at school that night and lied about where they at. But suddenly the awful reality dawned on them and hit them. We're in trouble. We're going to die. We're going to burn. And it was too late. They was trampling on each each other trying to get out of place. And they said there's bodies that high. And one woman said they stomped her in the face and stomped her body and it was just a miracle she got out. They were heard screaming and burned to death. You know what's so bad about this story that I'm telling you this morning? Them people, 250 of them burned to death. I mean, I'm 50 of them burned to death. And 250 had to be jerked out of the fire. But their burning stopped after a few minutes. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. You listening to me? You say, well, I thought I got saved when I was young. I was Bible school. Oh, wait a minute. You better be sure about that thing. You better be sure about that thing. If you don't know you're saved, I'd get out of my seat. I'd walk down here to this. I don't care who's looking. I don't care who's making... Listen, he said, well, somebody might laugh at you. Listen, that's crazy. That's insane. Who cares what somebody thinks? Who cares? If I'm going to burn forever and ever and ever, I don't, you can have one die laughing if you want to. I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. Don't wait. 